Welcome to Sports Jam for the week of September 24th. I'm Jay Wilcox. And I'm John Jacobson. This week of the show, we'll meet a soccer player from Park Center who has come a long way to excel on the field. And we'll look ahead in the Roy Griak Invitational Cross Country Meet with the White Set of Boys. And we'll get started with a big cross country meet in central Minnesota with a number of local teams. The Malacca Mega Meet is billed as the country's largest single day high school meet. The 2012 edition on a cool but mostly sunny day in Malacca. The boys in Class 4A are off and running on their 5,000 meter journey. To the finish now in Stillwater's Wade Hall wins easily on a very dominant day for the Ponies. We jump ahead, Maple Grove's Ryan Graham and Mitchell Dickerson are 22nd and 23rd. Armstrong's John Delaney and Nathan Comer are 29th and 30th. As Sainert looks on here, the girls class 4A race, Bemidji sophomore Jenna Trudson wins in a time of 14 minutes and 7 seconds. 10 seconds back of her in second place, Anna French of YZ. And the Trojans, Annika Halverson is sixth, and Elena Sonneson, 10th. Kate Simonette of Park Center places 25th. And here's what runner up French had to say about the meet. I was really happy to uh, get the chance to race against Jenna because she, she's just such a great athlete. And I know there's a couple teams that were good too. I'm excited to see how our team ended up finishing. And her team did pretty well. The Trojans take the top spot in Class 4A with 75 points with four runners in the top 20. Eastridge is second and Moorhead third. Other local squads include Maple Grove in eighth, Armstrong in ninth, Park Center 11th, and Champlain Park 25th. The Providence girls were fourth in Class A. On the boys' side, Stillwater wins easily, way ahead of runner-up Centennial in third place Bemidji. Maple Grove is sixth, Armstrong 10th, Osseo 12th. Champlain Park 24th and Park Center 26th. The Providence boys placed 8th in Class A. Now to football where Cooper played one of the biggest regular season games in recent school history. The Hawks' title hopes in the North Suburban Conference were on the line as they faced another top contender, Spring Lake Park. Former NFL back Marion Barber III from Wyzetta on hand for the action. First quarter, the run by Spring Lake Park quarterback Austin Swenson. Wrapped up, stripped of the ball by Cooper's Malik Rucker, and Rucker runs it all the way back for an apparent touchdown. But there's a penalty against Cooper, and the TD negated by the flag. No points for, Hawk, for the Hawks. Jared Evans rips off a nice run here for the Panthers. Each tackled inside the 10-yard line. It sets up a touchdown for a 12-0 Panthers lead. Opening kickoff of the second half is fumbled. And Cooper recovers, and they cash in. Bryson Scott Birch to Lenzel Koskoff for an 11-yard touchdown pass. Makes it 19-8, Spring Lake Park. Fourth quarter, Scott Birch hits Rucker in stride across the middle. Rucker takes it inside the 10-yard line. Ashante Payne caps off the drive with a short touchdown run, and the Hawks are within 26-16 after a two-point conversion. But the Panthers answer. Edgerdaman IG gets loose for a 66-yard touchdown sprint. He scores four times in all, and Spring Lake Park wins it 32-16. Hopkins jumped out to a 4-0 start this fall. Did they have enough to challenge top-ranked Eden Prairie in their late conference opener? Trailing 7-0 early in the second quarter, the Royals tied up. Quarterback JT Den Hartog holds his own number and runs it in from six yards out. The extra point ties it at seven. Next drive for Eden Prairie. And a nice play action fake by quarterback Grant Schaefer. Connor Johnson is wide open. 48 yards and a touchdown. And it's 14 to seven Eagles. Nice fake by Dan Hartog here. And he rolls out and hits Adam Kasky with a pass. Kasky fights his way into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Royals are within 21-14. But Eden Prairie comes back with a big score before halftime. Dan Fisher runs it in from six yards out, and the Eagles are on top, 28-14 at the half. And they pull away from there. Fisher scores again in the third quarter on his way to a four-touchdown night as Eden Prairie hands Hopkins its first loss of the season, 42-14. In the Northwest Suburban, Maple Grove is off to a solid start. They look to continue that on their home field against the Blaine Bengals. And it's mostly defense in the first half of this one. Alex Copa drops a snap, and then he's buried by Emmanuel Eric of the Crimson. 
Maple Grove's best offense in this one. Throw it up to 6-4 wide receiver Jake Winicky. He hauls in the Blake Skya pass despite double coverage, a 29-yard gain for the Crimson. That sets up the only points of the first half. Bryson White has 24-yard field goal, puts the Crimson up 3-0 at halftime. Early in the third quarter, and Eric will pick off the Copa pass. He returns it to the Blaine 16, and it starts to turn the tide Maple Grove's way. And that pick sets up this play. Play action, Sky hits Winicky for the score. It's 10-0 Crimson just over two minutes into the second half. Whiteha stands out at several positions, including kicker. He knocks this one through from 38 yards out for a 13-0 Crimson lead. And they go back to the air to Winicky here, and he hangs on despite the defender cutting his legs out for a 27-yard gainer late in the third quarter. And that sets up this play as they change ends for the fourth. Jack Wallach burrows in for a 20-0 lead. Maple Grove wins 20-6. They are now 3-1. A beautiful night in Fridley as Tatino Grace hosts Park Center. First quarter and a nice cutback move by Eagles running back Kez Flomo. He takes it 18 yards for a touchdown and Grace leads it 7-0. Then later in the first, Flomo will go off right tackle. This one's a four-yard touchdown run and it makes it 14-0 Tatino Grace. And Flomo makes it a football equivalent of a hat trick with his third rushing touchdown of the quarter. Grace leads it 21 to nothing after one. On to the second quarter, Kai Barber gets a turn, carrying a Pirate into the end zone on this eight-yard touchdown run. The Eagles go up 28 to nothing. And the Eagles' defense is outstanding as well. Ben Mazenga with a great pick, takes a reception away from the Pirates' Barney Corda, and it stops PC at midfield. The Pirates create a turnover as Dier Price strips the football and recovers the fumble. But it's Ticino Grace's night. They lead it 42-0 at the half and win 42-7. It was a tough last day of practice last week for the Providence Academy football team. Assistant and former head coach Roger LaPelt had passed away the afternoon before. A pregame moment of silence Friday for Roger who helped start the football program at Providence back in 2004. Now to the game. First quarter with Blake on the one-yard line going for it on fourth down with a stop made by Michael Cassette. Providence takes the ball over on downs. Second play of the ensuing drive. Ryan Reichelson out of the backfield. Breaks a few tackles. And he'll go 99 yards for the touchdown. It's the longest in school history. The Lions lead 8-0 after a two-point conversion. Reichelson on his way to a big night. Late first quarter, Blake's Logan Klein with a play-action pass to Jonas Simmons. It gets to the Bears. Gets the Bears to the four-yard line and sets up a second-quarter field goal to make it 8-3. Providence answers later in the second quarter. Jackson Canfield the option to Connor White. It's 18 yards for the score. 14-3 Lions at the half. Third quarter, Blake goes to the air again. This time it's intercepted by Matt Reichelson. And he runs it back just shy of midfield. And then Ryan Reichelson finishes off the ensuing drive with a two-yard touchdown run. 21-3 Providence. Blake tries to rally in the fourth, fourth quarter. It's workhorse running back Marcus Burr going 22 yards on the sweep. They got the Providence lead to 27-17. But that's as close as the Bears get. Providence wins it. Reichelson runs for 268 yards and two touchdowns. The Lions are now 3-1. and one. And our thoughts and uh, prayers with the family of Roger Pelt. Yeah, I'll definitely miss talking with Roger. What a great guy to work with yeah. over the years at YZ and then, of course, at Providence. Coming up on Sports Jam, volleyball action heats up, plus soccer on the way next. Welcome back to Sports Jam and time to talk volleyball. Osseo has been up and down overall, but the Orioles have played well in Northwest Suburban Conference matches. The Orioles at home against Andover. After trailing early in the first game, Osseo battles back. Megan Pekarik and Janae Morton combined for the block, and it's 13-12 Orioles. They take charge from there. Pekarik sets it to Shia Sanders for the big kill here. And Osseo takes game one, 25-18. Game two is a close one. The Huskies start with a nice dig, and they get into their offense. Olivia Graham getting the kill. 
And over takes the second game, 25-23, to even things up. In the third game, off the Andover serve, Osseo takes the point as Pekarek sets to Phyllis Webb for the kill and a 17-15 lead. They win the third, 25-23. Osseo gets out to a big lead in the fourth game. Pekarek sets up Jackie Jones for the kill. Osseo takes the fourth game, 25-15, to win three games to one. Also in Volleyball Park Center hosting Anoka. The Pirates go left side to Julia Zolnowski and she gets the kill for Park Center in game one. Kelsey Green though answers with a big kill on the middle attack here for Anoka. And then it'll be Cassie Green with a nicely placed kill down the line for the Tornadoes. They win game one 25 to 12. To game two, the pass is a bit off target but Samantha Harstead knocks it cross court and drops it in for a point here for the Pirates. Jessica Vlander will hammer one home for Park Center, but Anoka wins that second game 25-15. To game three, the set to Vlander. She splits the defense for a PC point, but it's pretty much all Anoka from there. Haley Gifford drops in a perfect ace serve. Anoka wins the game 25-10 and the match 3-0. Cooper's volleyball team won just five matches a year ago. They have been playing much better this season. Hawks enjoying more success here in 2012. They played at Columbia Heights in the North Suburban Conference match. First game, Katie Bowler setting the ball outside to her younger sister, Lori, for the kill. The Hawks jump out to a 7-1 lead. Later, it's Kylie Christensen setting to Jocelyn Waylogi for the attack and kill. Cooper breezes to a 25-8 win. The Highlanders play much better in game two. Yupa Vang delivers back-to-back -back aces put Heights ahead 9-7, and they led for much of that game. The Hawks rally late, quick set, and a Hendricks for the kill. Cooper wins 25-22 to go up two games to none. Third game, Cooper, Cooper goes back to the middle, and the kill again from Hendricks. Hawks out in front 8-2. They go on to win game 3-25-11 to sweep the Highlanders. Cooper's now 3-1 in conference matches. The big change for the Hawks from a year ago. I think we have a lot better chemistry this year and uh, we work harder in practice and have more fun instead of just always being serious. In girls swimming, the Lake Conference is full of top teams. The Wyzetta girls are talented but ran into a tough opponent. Wyzetta hosting Minnetonka and this one at Lifetime Fitness. In the 200 medley relay, Wyzetta's team of Emma Paulson, Madison Price, McKinsey Merriam, and Anna Petty set a new pool record of 148.19. In the 200 IM, Isabel Wire takes first with Price of Wyzetta coming in second. And they're off in the 50 freestyle and it's a good battle to the finish. Carolyn Kane of Tonka and Emma Paulson of Wyzetta end up in a dead heat with identical times of 24.33. Val Wallman of Wyzetta wins the diving competition, but it's the skippers taking the meet 107 to 79. Now to soccer. The Maple Grove girls soccer team lost its first conference match of the season last Wednesday. Crimson hoped to avoid a back-to-back -back losses when they took on unbeaten Andover Thursday. First half, Haley Nelson passes to McKenna Poplinski, who chips in a shot beautifully for a goal. Crimson lead 1-0. Later in the first half, and check out the big save by Maple Grove's Marissa Hamilton, robbing Hayden, Hayden Becker of the goal. Defender Angie Davison there to clear it away. Great pass on the free kip by Larissa McCough, headed in by Keely Biat. 2 0 Crimson. A solid game for coach Ben Lavon's Crimson. Nelson scores the team's fourth goal of the night here. Maple Grove stuns Andover 5 0 Crimson, the final. In the late conference, Wyzetta and Minnetonka meet up. Wyzetta's Kylie Schwartz steals the pass and fires a hard shot. Lizzie Chris makes the save, but Summer Johnson slams the rebound home. The Trojans grab a 1-0 lead less than four minutes in. Midway through the first half, Tonka evens the score. Keeley Cartwright's crossing pass nudged in by Ellen Ma, and it's 1-1 at halftime. Tony Pesnicker's Trojans looking to break the deadlock. In the second half, but Chris gets a piece of the deflected ball after a corner kick. This one ends in a 1-1 tie, team's second tie this season. 
in boys soccer. Wyzetta outplayed Minnetonka the first time the teams met but had to settle for a 2-2 two -to -two draw. That wasn't the case in the rematch. This one at Minnetonka and Wyzetta's Lewis O'Connor with a corner kick right to Drake Mianas for a header and goal. The Trojans go up four and a half minutes in. Later in the first half, Alexei Moa takes the pass and he'll drill the shot that stop at Bradley Bobo. Buries the rebound for a two to nothing Wyzetta lead. Minnetonka gets on the board after a throw in. The ball is loose in front and Ryan Braun will knock it in from close range to put the skippers within one at two to one at the half. But Wyzetta puts it away with this one. The first try will hit a crossbar. Max Moline saves the second one, but then Nick Riley knocks it in. The Trojans score a three to one victory. And now both Trojans teams get set for Edina on Thursday. Next up in our Sports Jam Spotlight, meet a standout soccer player who is leading Park Center's boys to a very strong season. He's come a long way in 10 years since coming to America in more ways than one. In this week's Sports Jam Spotlight, we meet a young man from Western Africa who is right at home here in Minnesota. He's a special talent on a team enjoying a special season. Park Center's number 14, Francis Caroma, is something else to watch. He does things on a bad day I'll never be able to do on a good day. Uh, he, uh, he does some things on the field where uh, I just think give up the ball, give up the ball, and, and he'll keep it, and he'll walk through five guys, and he'll put the ball in the net, and I just, everybody I think looks at the field saying, how the heck did that just happen? Francis is the Pirates' leading scorer this fall, but he puts the team first. The goals he's racked up are sometimes show-stopping, and maybe even more than he expected before the season. I was just thinking about taking one game at a time and doing the best I could to help my team win any game. It really didn't matter to me because at the end of the day, it's our team that matters. It's not me. It's the entire team that I'm looking forward to. The Pirates are ranked fifth in the state in Coach Sean McNatton's first season as head coach. The program has struggled in recent years, so the recognition that boys soccer is getting around school is nice. Karoma's alone and he scores. It's very good because everybody talk about it in school and people start noticing and we start having people coming out and supporting us and it's just being a real good, good feeling to it. It's, it's very good. Francis is a native of Sierra Leone on Africa's west coast. His mother moved the family to Minnesota in 2002 at the end of his home country's 11 year civil war. My mom just wanted a better future for us, so she decided that we should come here and continue our education here and try to be successful here. The civil war caused thousands in Sierra Leone to lose their lives, including Francis's father, a civilian casualty who died when Francis was very young. I have like a little bit of memory with, of him, like, my most favorite memory of him is when at night I always sit with him and, and w watching the sky and watching the star at night and sitting on his lap. That was the best memory of, of a all for me. His father would no doubt be proud that his youngest son has aspirations beyond high school and beyond soccer. Francis is an outstanding math student whose goal in college is to earn a degree in accounting. He's in his second year of Park Center's IB math program. I really love math, and I think that, that accounting is one of the be uh, best suits for me because there I can use my, more of my math skills than anywhere else. And it's just, I love working with numbers. It's, it's more fun than reading or any other subjects for me. Ten years after moving 5,300 miles from home, Francis Caroma laughs and admits he's still not a big fan of Minnesota winters, but he's thankful for ending up in Brooklyn Park. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad. I met some fantastic people, and I go to a real good school that I really love, and I'll never change this experience because it taught me a lot of lessons here, and, and I really love every minute of it. Through 13 matches, Francis has scored 12 goals with 10 assists to lead the Northwest Suburban Conference in scoring. 
He told us he hasn't returned to Sierra Leone since his family left in 2002, but is hoping to travel back there before the end of his senior year. Sports Jam returns after this as Jay talks with the Wyzetta Boys Cross Country Team. Welcome back to Sports Jam. As we saw earlier in the show, we had some big cross country meets this past Saturday and another big one coming up on Saturday at the GRIAC Invitational. Joined by the Wyzetta Boys today and uh, we'll start with Adam Brandt. First of all, how excited are you guys to uh, be getting set for what's really one of the biggest meets during the regular season? Um, we're getting really excited. It's really uh, a chance to see where the team's at, um, you know, who has really come up into, um, you know, our faster racers, and uh, we'll get to see where we stand kind of with other teams in a lot of competition. It's a college course, and uh, I know a lot of times, fast times there, it seems like, do you like running at GRIAC? Is it a good opportunity in terms of uh, what you're running on the course to? Uh, it's a good opportunity. It's a little crowded, a little hilly, but uh, we're ready for it and uh, we're excited. You guys aiming for anything in particular at GRIAC? Uh, I would love to see us just work together as a group and really run as a group. All right, thanks for joining us. And Connor Olson, uh, you guys certainly have had a great tradition in cross country here. And uh, how excited are you about the, the team this year? How do you think things are going? Oh, very excited. We're, we're just having a great season so far. We have a lot of guys stepping up to the plate this year, and I think we're we're ready for GRIAC. Is this one one of the biggest ones? Would you say other than you know sections and state? Um, I have to say it's one of the biggest biggest meets. It lets us test ourselves nationally, see where we are in our region and so forth. How important is where you place at something you know relatively early in the season like this? Does it matter very much, or is it more about how you guys are progressing? Um, it's not as important early in the season. Our goal is still to race good at the end of the end of the year, but we like to test ourselves and see where we are in comparison to the rest of the field. All right, thanks for joining us, and good luck at the GRIAC. Thanks. And Coach Bill Miles, uh, obviously you've been through this a time or two, but uh, how much importance do you place on a meet like GRIAC as you know where it falls in your season? Well, it's still fairly early in the season. It's in September, and until you get to the end of October or November, it really doesn't matter ultimately. Um, we use it as a chance to sort of, as a guy suggested, test ourselves, find out what we're at, see if we can run as a uh, team in a tough field with a crowded field and uh, uh, just do things right and finish strong. So we see it as a opportunity to get out and uh, learn. In your eyes, has this team performed the way you would have hoped up to this point? We ran really well at the uh, Marshfield Invitational uh, in the very uh, Labor Day weekend and uh, we raced really well for about 4K. Uh, of a 5K race at the Heartland a week and a half ago. Um, but we learned a lot about what we need to do to race well as a team at the end. So uh, it's been a really good season, a very positive season for us to this point. Are you surprised at all with where your team is ranked and everything? I mean, you've been up near the top a lot of times right now, standing number two behind Stillwater. Is that where the Trojans belong? Uh, well, we'd like to think we belong number one, but... Uh, uh, we have to prove it. We have to earn that, and that's what they have the, the meet score at the end of the season. This group has really stepped up well. We've had a senior class that has emerged, uh, uh, Adam Brandt and uh, Manny and uh, Robert Rudine and uh, Derek Peterson uh, are doing really well, and other seniors, and uh, we're young as well. It's exciting to see how many guys we have running uh, fast times at this point and com uh, competing for a top seven spot in our varsity. All right, thanks for joining us, Bill, and have fun at the GRIAC. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right, Bill Miles, the boys cross-country coach at YZ, his team one of many top teams competing at the GRIAC Invitational coming up Saturday. We'll be back to wrap up Sports Jam in just a moment. Our game of the week is a Northwest Suburban Conference football matchup between two teams looking for a conference win. Armstrong visits Park Center Friday. You can watch that game live at 5 o'clock here on Channel 12 or catch the replays Saturday night at 8.30 and 11. That'll do it for Sports Jam. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.